I don't necessarily believe that it was bad for me to keep my sons away from black barbers. Hello, 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 look at me. I've been fresh. I've been walking with my savior. Yes, I'm trying to do my best. And look, I'm getting some back. I'm off trying to shake up the flesh. When you see me, nothing's fresh. When you see me, see me, see me, you say hello. All right, so we are about to head to pick up your rival. We're going to take him for the first time to a black barber shop to get his hair cut. Now, usually I cut his hair, but a black kid, black barber shop, I think he needs to understand the experience and the true craftsmanship that happens when a barber lays them hands on you. You know what I'm saying? With the clippers and the professional style, all that. So we're going to introduce him to Tage. The homie Tage is going to cut his hair at the barber shop. It's going to be dope. So are you saying that you want a mohawk right now? Probably. Probably? Yeah. What do you what's difference in like your hair and like, you know, one of your friends' hair from school? My hair is like this and this. Yeah, it's like it's a little bit more like coily, right? Like it's um it's it's a different texture of hair. So uh because of that, you can't just go anywhere. Everyone doesn't know how to cut hair. They may say they know how to cut your hair, but they don't necessarily know how to cut it. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be very careful on like where you choose to go. So when I was a kid, I used to go to the barbershop all the time because my, you know, no one cut my hair except for the barber. So anytime I wanted to get my hair cut, I had to walk to the barbershop. How much minutes was it? To walk there? Yeah. Like 10, it wasn't long. You know, my mom's friend from high school would cut my hair, his name was Skinny Poop. Skinny Poop? Skinny Poop, yep. Skinny Poop um, used to cut my hair. His brother, well, his name is really Jermaine, but everyone called him Skinny Poop. Why? Cause he was skinny oh before that though my uncle would cut my hair sometimes my uncle thomas my, my mom's brother you met him once before and uh he would cut my hair and i thought when i grow up i want to cut my kids hair like my uncle cut my hair but eventually i'm not gonna be able to cut your hair no more because you're gonna want a certain style and this guy right here i'm about to take you to he can do any style. Yo, so today we're gonna take uh, my son for the first time to a black barber shop. I usually cut his hair, um, and he's never had his hair cut, you know what I mean, by a professional. So I want him to understand the craftsmanship and what it takes to have a real barber put their hands on you with the, you know what I'm saying, with the professionalism. So we're gonna go ahead and check out my man Tage. Come on with us. Welcome black. Before we hop into this beautiful episode of my son getting his hair cut by a black barber, I want to tell you that my experience with a black barber is so intricate to my childhood and a part of my upbringing. I don't necessarily believe that it was bad for me to keep my sons away from black barbers, but I felt that I was sufficing because it's an experience that I always wanted to have with my children. But when you think about the history of black barbers, it changes your perspective completely because the black barber is one of the most essential services for black people. And, and I, I didn't even know how deep the history was, right? You know, in my childhood and many of our childhoods, the, the black barbershop experience is, it compares to nothing, right? It is the place where we congregate, it's the place where we communicate, it is the place where, um, you know, we, we, we figure out the standards of who we are and uh, it's basically the, it's, it's, it's like the water cooler talk type vibe for black people. It's a safe haven because nobody else is there but us, right? And I know that it, it was important for the transformation in the middle of the week, at the end of the week, having this experience where you can walk in one way and walk out completely different and more confident and just feeling like I can't be touched after this haircut. You understand me? 
The history behind it is so crazy. So did you know, right? and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I'm, you know, I read this, my history might be a little bit off, uh, but you know, leave definitely in the comment sections any suggestions and articles and stuff like that you guys have. But from what I understand, uh, you know, people who were enslaved, black people who were, who were enslaved, uh, a part of our services to the plantation owners um, was, uh, you know, to be barbers, right? To, to trim their beards, to cut their hair, to shave, all that stuff. Like that was a service that we did um, against our will to these enslavers, right? And somebody got smart and was like, yo, there's other people, Jimmy John down the road and whatever the face is down the street and whoever, you know what I'm saying? Like they need haircuts too. So yeah, you can come use my my, my slave and you can cut your hair, but it's gonna cost this much, right? But they didn't pay the slave, they took the money. So this was something like a service that was being licensed, wasn't even being licensed out, but was being used for profit. So much so that when barbershops like first, you know, started going, like black people, the only the only patrons of barbershops were white people because they didn't want the clippers on black skin. So black barbers could only cut white hair. Like they kept us from our own people. That's insane. So in order to get a haircut to get fresh, we they had to do it like after hours and you know they had to sneak and get like and cut black hair. Like that's insane. This was like out of survival. So there's a huge industry, barbershops, huge industry right for this service and now you look at the barber now and the barber is a renaissance man of sorts right he doesn't just do one thing he has multiple different businesses and um he's he's a leader in the community uh he's someone that serves the community uh i remember when tage uh the, the barber who's gonna cut your rice hair today during the, the the pandemic he was outside cutting kids hair in the neighborhood you know what I mean? Because everything was closed. So he was cutting kids' hair in the neighborhood. Like, the barber is so important to our community. And that experience is so essential to black experience. I just want to honor that more. So if you don't mind, I would love to share more of that experience on this channel. But I want to know, what has your experience been with the black barber, with the black barbershop? Leave it in the comment section below. And now I'm just going to go ahead and let this bless you. Um, and shout out to the homies uh, for sending us this track. Uh, Jay Ruckers, thank you. Tage, thank you. Uriah, you're welcome. Welcome black. <laughs> Right now we're witnessing the beginning of possibly a long relationship. This child is meeting his barber. I can see in the beginning Uriah is very skeptical. He doesn't know what the outcome is. He doesn't know the process. And Tage is just grooving. He's in his bag. One of the main things that you need with your barber is trust. You're sitting in his chair knowing that when you step out of this chair, you're going to become a different person. You'll witness the transition in Uriah once he stands up out of the seat. His mood changes. His face brightens up. For me, it reminds me so much of baptism. But man, can we speak to just the craftsmanship of what Tage is doing? Shout out to all the barbers out there doing this every single day, transforming the lives of people everywhere. One of the very subtle things about the barbershop is the waiting area. Because usually it's a group of men watching somebody else get transformed, just waiting for what's going to happen to them. I love the fact that Uriah chose a design in his head. It's funny he put it in the back of his head because he really can't see it like that. Just showing 
going off at this point. He pulled out all the stops. At this point, Tage is just flexing on us. I'll put a link in the description below so if you're ever in Oceanside, California, you can stop by Tage's shop. Trust and believe, with anybody in that barbershop, you will not be disappointed. grand finale is getting that touch of alcohol that's how you know you're finished and it's like the last hurdle you gotta hop but you see it right here on Uriah's face he looks brighter more confident like he got a weight off his shoulder congratulations from dad and you gotta pay the man so Uriah gave him the money Taze gave him back the tip and I said, nah, the tip is for him. Raya thought he was going to take the money and pocket it back in his pocket. Wow. Today was amazing. Man, you're clean, dog. How you feel? Handsome. He was already handsome before that, let's be honest. But uh, right now, so what did you think? Okay, real experience. What did you think about... Getting your hair cut by a professional barber, did you like it? Did you rather me do it? What, what do you think? I liked it. And, yeah, I didn't feel good. You what? I felt good. You felt good? Yeah. You felt like you were getting taken care of pretty good? Yeah. Did you, um, do you want to go back? Probably. Probably, okay.